This is the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Good evening. Welcome inside the Rev Zone. Kevin Bollinger alongside Running Rebels head coach Marvin Menzies coming off a very important and good win against San Diego State on Saturday night at the MAC. Yeah, very, very good win. Uh, it's funny, you, you're working so hard to prepare for the game with the scouting report and the mentality of the kids and, you know, collaborating with your staff that you don't get it sometimes because you're insulated. You don't get it until after the game's over. And then you hear all the talk of the different reasons why it was a significant win for us. So, so that's a good thing. However, you have no time to enjoy it because you have to move on to the next game. So uh, the enjoyment will be for the offseason. I think I'll pick up fly fishing in the offseason <laughs> this year. <laughs> well, let's enjoy at least the highlights right now from right. this one. The Running Rebels started fast, and they certainly finished strong. Rapper Lil John in the house to fire up the crowd and Travell Beck getting the start in the place of Chris Clyburn to shake things up. It all worked as the running Rebels came out strong. Brandon McCoy down low off the glass to get things started. Then in transition, Jordy Johnson with the alley up over to McCoy. JoJo Mori would hit a triple and Shakur Justin with the offensive rebound and putback. Everybody contributing as UNLV raced out to a 9-2 lead. San Diego State star guard Trey Kell went down with an ankle injury less than four minutes in and he would not return. The Rebels try to take advantage. Justin with the steal and he throws it down. Then McCoy curls into the lane and gets the bucket of the bump. The Aztecs though would stay in it. The ball movement around to Jalen McDaniels for the stuff and Max Montana knocked down a triple. Justin and McCoy worked well together all night. Here, Brandon feeding Shakur in the lane on back-to-back -back possessions for the buckets. SDSU wouldn't go away and took their first lead of the game with two and a half left in the half as Devin Watson hits a three. We were all tied up at 38 at the break. Second half, watch Beck break his defender's ankles and step back for the three. That would get UNLV out of the gate. Then McCoy with the jumper from the free throw line. He gets the hoop in the harm and he is fired up. Mori would connect from long distance and watch JoJo get his man in the air, step in and nail the bucket and the bump. Johnson feeds a cutting Clyburn for the lay-in. And off the rebound, the long pass ahead to Jordy. He gets the hoop and would force a San Diego State timeout as the UNLV lead was extended to seven. They weren't done. Amari Hardy with the three. JoJo finds a cutting Mbake Jong for the and one. And Justin with the baseline drive for the reverse lay-in as the lead was 11 with just over five minutes left. The Aztecs, though, would hit triples on three straight possessions to cut it to two. That triggered winning time, and the Rebs responded. McCoy and Maureen hitting jumpers to open it back up to six. Then on two possessions late, UNLV ran the shot clock down. Justin would hit a spinner in the lane, and Johnson got a jumper to go, both before the buzzer, and that would seal it up. Justin and McCoy go for 21 apiece as UNLV ends their 11-game losing streak to the Aztecs with an 88-78 win. Just turning the corner as a team, you know, just trying to uh, get better every day on and off the court, um, just working hard every day. I mean, this win was uh, tremendous, not for only for like us, for like the program and the fans that came out and supported us today. Um, going forward, it's just going to build our confidence knowing that, um, you know, that we, we beat a, we beat a, a great team tonight. Uh, so that means we can go out and compete with anybody any, any given night. There really seemed to be a concerted effort last night to push the tempo on the basketball right from the get-go. And I know that's what you want to do all the time, but right. it seemed a lot more apparent last night. Uh, did you see something in tape that you thought that would be more effective, and how do you think it, it resulted? We, we felt like we needed to attack them in transition. They're, they're really good at uh, defensively in the half. They struggled a little bit. Uh, they've been inconsistent with it, but that is who they are as a program. Um, but it, it was really more about trying to play to our strengths and, and play more intelligent basketball. We still had a lot of miscues, I thought, and a lot of uh, 
decision making uh, plays that could be des desired a little bit. We've got to improve uh, down the stretch, but but nonetheless, uh, the attacking them was the one of the things we wanted to do. It was a great example last night of unselfish basketball uh, on a lot of levels because there was that extra pass and right. and the cutting. I think that the guys really kind of helped each other out a little more last night than maybe we've seen in the past few weeks. Yeah, and that's something that you know uh, teams across the country that are playing really good basketball. That's what they do. It's just one of those components that is necessary to play the game with the respect that it deserves and it's a team game and so you you know you got to bounce for others you got to play for others people have heard me say that before got to make the extra pass and we've shown them more film on on what good basketball looks like um we've shown them coach brown showed us some nba clips of, of guys really sharing the ball and playing uh, great offense and and it's impressive to see so they have to visualize that in order to be able to go out and execute and i think i thought that led well into the mindset into the game last night well, Tuesday night earlier in the week, the Running Rebels had to travel to Fresno to take on a tough Bulldog team in a game that went right down to the wire. The Running Rebels had a tough travel to Fresno, and it seemed to show early as they were sluggish out of the gate. Jerron Hopkins with the steal, and he gets two on the other end. Then off the missed Hopkins jumper, Bryson Williams flies through and gets the putback slam, and Ray Bowles knocks down a three as Fresno jumped out to a quick 9-1 lead. UNLV fought back. Jordy Johnson hits a triple. The Rebs get an offensive rebound, and JoJo Mooring dials up long distance. And Travell Beck drives, takes the contact, and gets the bucket. An 8-0 run tied things back up. Brandon McCoy had some strong spurts on the offensive end, getting the board and making the hook shot. Then the left-handed three-footer in the lane. And off the Chris Clyburn miss, the big man is there with the follow slam. Terrell Carter was a problem all night. In the lane and getting the ball off his own miss and putting it back. Williams would connect on a 17-footer to cap a 10-0 Bulldog run that put them back in front. Mooring, though, would respond with the running one-hander. But it's Carter doing damage again, getting buckets on back-to-back -back possessions as the team's headed into the locker room of UNLV trailing 36-29. It was a roller coaster ride in the second half. There was a lot of good, like this sweet dish from Johnson to Shakur Houston for the lay in. And some sloppy. The steal by Jordy and the Rebs run. But the pass back to Clyburn is fumbled out of bounds for an unforced air. UNLV kept fighting. JoJo with the alley oop to McCoy. And Johnson with the bounce pass to Houston for the lay in. The up-tempo play continued as Johnson pushes it to the rim for two. And running again, Jordy to JoJo. He gets the hoop and the harm. When McCoy got this bucket in the lane, the Rebels had fought back to tie it up. Once again, Fresno went to Carter, who makes the power move for the one-hander. Watch Johnson as he cuts the lane and gets fed, and he gets the bucket and the bump. Just over two minutes to go. UNLV down three. Shot clock winding down. Deshaun Taylor would beat the buzzer with a triple. And when Hopkins got this one to go in the lane, the Rebels were down eight with just 139 left. It looked to be over, but it wasn't. Johnson all the way to the rim for the bucket and the foul. And on the next possession, it's Jordy again getting the three-point play. The deficit was cut to two. Down a deuce with seconds left. A chance to tie or take the lead. Johnson gets blocked by Carter. McCoy's put back is no good. And Carter gobbles up the board to seal it up. A frustrating road trip indeed as the fight was there. But the Rebels just couldn't get over the hump as UNLV falls in Fresno, 69-63. Let's start with that last play. 15 seconds left. You're down two. Chance to tie or take the lead. You had the timeout. I know right. a lot of coaches don't like to do that because they want to keep defenses on their heels a little bit. Right. Uh, the idea is to get the penetration, but it's also to, to play make a pass, others. right? <laughs> yeah. I think that uh, if you see the clip there, you know, Nunu is wide open in the other corner there. He could have got a little bit deeper and got in Jordy's vision. or And Brandon also could have uh, shaped up a little bit more with his knees bent and backed up, showing a target there to really be uh, able to receive it. But... Um, you know, to, to Jordy's defense, he had just scored on two and ones and going to the paint and attacking those guys off the bounce. But those were those were uh, 
uh, transition ones, and you know, so it's 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 one of those give and take kind of deals where you go, well, nah, nah, let's stay more connected. Let's you know run what we talked about, but but you want to give your guys some some freedom to be to make plays as well. But it, typically, when we bounce, we want to bounce for others. Terrell Carter has done damage against UNLV in the entire time he's been at Fresno yeah. uh, against other teams. He seems to not have big games, you know, right. from three, four, or scoreless in games, and then he goes double digits against UNLV. Right. Where's the matchup problem? Why, why did he get uh, so many looks around the rim there? The matchup is UN and then the L and the V being all together. That's the matchup. And <laughs> guys are going to come to knock us off our blocks. They just they come more motivated. They come more pumped up. And our guys haven't embraced that concept yet. They got a lot of new guys. I mean, Shakur doesn't even know about the San Diego State rivalry. Uh, uh, a lot of these guys are from off the West Coast and, and don't understand, or are from a younger generation and that don't understand the, the magnitude of what UNLV stands for nationally. So a guy like that, we're going to have to do some different things on him and attack him a little bit uh, differently defensively next time we play him because he killed us. And uh, to his credit, he came ready to play and did a good job against us. Well, time for our first break right now, and we're going to start our look ahead to this week. Two games with San Jose State rolling into town and the big rematch with the Boise State Broncos as the Rebels travel to the Gem State. What's it going to take to get that W? We're going to break it down in two minutes as the Red Zone rolls on. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. The week ahead for the Running Rebels, a home game on uh, Wednesday night against San Jose State and then a roadie in Boise on Saturday. Wednesday night at the Thomas and Mac, San Jose State comes in for a rematch of two teams that played earlier this month in the Bay Area. On January 3rd in San Jose, UNLV had a less than stellar performance on both sides of the ball as the Spartans ended regulation on a 15-4 run to force overtime. In that overtime, JoJo Morin took only a second shot of the game, a buried three-pointer that helped propel the Rebels to victory. Did the Rebs take this team lightly? If so, San Jose got their attention, and this was a lesson that in the Mountain West, you better come to play every night. The rematch should bring a little more intensity. On Saturday, UNLV makes their yearly run for the border to the Taco Bell Arena in Boise to take on the Broncos. In the first meeting of these two teams, Boise dominated the second half, going on a 20-2 run and pulled away from the Rebels 83-74. The Broncos out-rebounded UNLV 48-29. Boise State's Chandler Hutchison carved up UNLV for 32 points on 13 of 18 shooting. He's a player that's been impossible for teams to shut down completely. You just have to make sure he doesn't have a huge game. Often overlooked on this year's team is senior transfer Christian Segenfelder. The German has an inside-out game that can pose some matchup problems. Segenfelder says what separates Boise from other teams he's seen is unselfish play. We play for each other, and that is what, what is, gives us the chance to separate us in the end. This will be UNLV's first Saturday game in Boise for a while. The last few have been late starts on weeknights that has led to lighter crowds. But this time, especially with Boise playing so good, the big chalupa should be rocking. Hutchison says Taco Bell Arena is underrated as a tough place to play. The city really rallies around our sports team and, and, and wants to see us succeed. So it's, it's tough. We get there and really seeing those, those Saturday night games and those, those primetime games that we're fortunate enough to get always help us, you know, and, and they always make it an exciting uh, place to come in and play. Traditionally, these two teams have played games that have come down to the wire. We always have to refer back to the 2014 overtime loss where the Rebels thought they had won it, but a review showed that time had expired before the ball left DeVille Smith's hand, leading to the infamous video of Leon Rice looking like he just won Wimbledon. Expect this game to have the same amount of passion and fire. This is one the running Rebels need to get. So Boise in the first meeting did a great job defensively, especially in the second half. Yeah. How important is the film room this week to get the guys prepared for Saturday night? 
Well, we're still not to the stage of the season where the practice floor is, is, is less important either. So the film room is going to be important, but we've got to get back to work on the floor and actually physically um, go through what we're going to do to win from, from a, at a high in, intense level, not just a walkthrough. Because you can't match their uh, replicate, you know, what they do and the pace and so forth unless you are on that floor and trying to, trying to get it done. So there's some scouting <clears throat> specific things we have to do for both teams. We're going to uh, switch gears right now and talk some college football straight ahead in the red zone. We sit down with UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez to discuss this week's groundbreaking out of the Fertitta football complex, plus the new defensive coordinator and recruiting Sanchez giving us the 411 on it all next. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Welcome back inside the Rev Zone. We're joined now by UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez after a very monumental week for this program, finally breaking ground on the Fertitta Complex. Yeah, it really is. It's exciting. You know, um, I think everyone in the community knows we've been working hard on it for a couple of years now. So for it finally to come to fruition and to be able to go out there and celebrate with uh, that great group of people, people that have been so generous, the Fertitta family and everyone else who's contributed to the building. It's an exciting day for our players and for the future of the program. What kind of impact will it have in terms of recruiting? I'm sure you're already recruiting to that building, even though it's not built yet. What are you hearing from recruits? Well, the, the biggest thing is people can't say it's not really happening. You know, you get that competitive culture, you know, in, uh, in college football. So it's happening. Ground's broken. Um, there's now a date on it. They know they'll be in it before next spring ball, which is an exciting thing. Uh, and it'll allow us to have the tools that, that are necessary to develop the team, to, for, for them to go ahead and, you know, be able to eat, you know, nutrition, strength and conditioning, to have the classrooms you need to go ahead and, and, and properly get these guys ready to roll. And at the end of the day, it's about recruiting. I mean, when, when you walk into a building, like that and you see the quality of it and you see the investment that's been made in it it makes you want to be a part of this thing so it's going to be something that we haven't had that's going to be a big jolt i know you've been raising money on this since you got hired but there's still a little bit to go, right? Yeah. You still have work to do. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, the goal is to get to 30 million. We're right there, right under the 24 million uh, area. So, you know, there's some, you know, there's some people we're meeting with. There, there's more gifts that are going to be coming in. Um, some we already have that we haven't announced. Um, have, doesn't change that bottom number. But I mean, now too, it's something that you, as you see it happening, you know, I think more people are going to want to be motivated to be a part of it to get their family's name and their legacy in that building. In terms of what's inside that building, you mentioned the training table and, and the weights and everything else, but having everybody in, in one spot, when you talk about building a family and a culture, that's a, a big part of it as well. It really is, and there's a couple components. There, there's the athletic performance component where you're going to have your, your athletic uh, training center, weightlifting you know, area. You're going to have your sports medicine area to go ahead and got to get those guys healthy and back on the field. Obviously, your classrooms. And then there's a social component, you know, having a player's lounge. I mean, right now, our locker room, it's the mess hall, it's the player's lounge, and a locker room, right? So having a place where they can come together and, you know, and, you know play their games and hang out and just be kids, you know? And then also the academic end, so being able to to make sure that we take care of them and you know it's got a study room in there it's got 30 individual cubicles individual tutoring rooms and then the dining hall and nutrition center so I mean really those are four different things but when you when you look at the building it's really going to encompass all the different facets of a student athletes you know life and it's something they're going to be in and utilize every day some of the other big news going on the defensive coordinator spot has has now been filled You've got some coaches filled on the defensive end and, and game changers. What do these guys bring to the table? You know, Tim Skipper is our defensive coordinator. He's going to bring a, you know, a huge just jolt of energy. You know, he's a young, intelligent guy, been around a lot of really good footballs at University of Florida most recently. Uh, before that was part of that big turnaround at Colorado State that kind of got them going where they're at now and, and previously with Pat Hill at Fresno State and, you know, in some other places too. So has a really good, diverse background in the game of football coach on both sides, been a defensive coordinator in the past, excited. And then Al Simmons, who's going to be our new safeties coach. You know, Al's been around for a long time, coached a lot of really good football, spent a lot of years in the NFL. Schematically, are we going to see anything different with the defense than what you've run in the past? We're going to base out of a 4-3, but we're also going to run some odd front too. And, and we've done that in the past, but you probably see us do a little bit more, but we are going to base out of the 4-3. I think what you're going to see is a much more aggressive approach. I mean, that was one of the things when I went out through the process and interview. We just we, we need to become a little bit more of attacking the defense. You know, we don't want to sit in our heels all the time. And I think if we can get ourselves a little bit better on defense, play a little bit better on special teams, continue to grow on offense like we have, we've got an opportunity to win a bunch of games. Thank you, Coach. We're going to have more thoughts 
thoughts from Coach Menzies and the Runner Rebel Plays of the Week right after this. Stick with us. The Red Zone back in two minutes. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. All right, Coach, back at it. Chance for some momentum building coming off of Saturday's win with another home game Wednesday. Yeah, good crowd, good crowd. Hopefully that'll keep us uh, keep keep the folks coming in, putting butts in the seats. That was great energy in the building. 8 o'clock tip on Wednesday night against San Jose State. We'll be on the road team in Boise as well, and we'll have more Reb Zone for you next Sunday. Thanks for joining us for this one. We leave you with the Running Rebels Plays of the Week. Good night. Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie, your home, your